95.7 Jam, the hymns number one for hip-hop and R&B. What's going on, B-Ham? You know, you on the phone with Kay Simone, and it was only right that I got a lovely friend of mine to hop on the line with me, Crystal Kimbro. How are you? Oh, long time no see. You know, that's what I'm saying, okay? The last time we were talking about ladies who list. Okay, and the craziness that was going on with that show, <laughs> we talked about setting boundaries, the importance of mental health, because honey, okay, during this catch up, we going to talk about it. <laughs> you know what? I'm really excited for this interview because, yeah, there's a lot to unpack. Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot to unpack. So let, let's start. Let's start with this one. Okay. Now, with all the craziness that we did see for Ladies Who List, right, what happened? Because from my understanding, it's canceled and it's not returning. <laughs> what happened? You know what? Okay, Simone, can I, can I talk honestly? Oh, yeah, you already know. You already know. This is what we do. I think Black women in business, certain circles maybe just aren't ready to embrace because... Yeah. Another show about Black women in business um, that aired on Netflix, mm -hmm. which was Selling Tampa. Selling Tampa, yep, was also too canceled. Did not. And they had a winning formula already. And, oh, wow. and I know, you know, our ratings were, were immaculate. You know, I'm still getting people that recognize me. And, um, and so I know viewers were tuning in. Mm -hmm. But why? I don't know but by the grace of God um that experience led itself to this one absolutely and we're going to talk about that experience in just a second but we got to oh, figure out what's going on like, <laughs> we got to talk about this ladies who list because it, it, it's so crazy that you say that right because we got to talk about it it was on own you know what I mean so then we got to look at the fact of what do you mean who wasn't ready to see black women and black circles you know black women black entrepreneurs you know of of such prominence who wasn't willing to see that circulate you know and I don't want to make any speculations or uh, accusations for the own network per se or wow. the production company um, because, you know, it's speculation. I don't want to speculate. Um, but I know that the ratings were good. Um, but in all honesty, that was such a mind blowing experience yeah. <laughs> um, that I think everything happened the way it was supposed to. We, when it comes to own, you think that it's going to be, of, you know, it's just going to be something of such stature, you know what I mean? Not so catty and not so, you know, reality TV-ish, not so VH1-ish, you know what I mean? And even though it wasn't, even though... <laughs> we still love you. Absolutely. You know, we definitely still love you. But, you know, it it wasn't that to a to a extent. But what we do know, it doesn't matter who you with, what network it is, we all know that controversy sells. So... I don't know. Talk about the balance, though, of that. You know what I mean? Do you do you think that this particular producers and I wouldn't say network of its own, but the producers were more into the caddy and the controversial more than they were into true professional black women, you know, elevating and showing the, the problematics that we go through as black women soaring as, you know, professionals versus going up against each other as a battle all the time? Like, talk to me. I can't speak to someone else's state of mind, okay. right? Absolutely. But I will say that I think because of the way the entertainment industry is used to seeing Black women, mm -hmm. not because of how we are, but because of how we're portrayed, I think certain shows and certain um, production companies want to keep us in that box. Yeah. When I will say to my cat, my old cast's defense, every person on that show had a legitimate business. Absolutely. Every that show was who they said they were or are. Um, and so it is a pity that we didn't get to see, you know, 
how I was able to establish a team and a staff that looks like me, that was completely new to the real estate law industry, uh, how we uh, manage multiple personalities within our staff, uh, manage expectations with buyers, sellers, investors, developers. There's just so much that goes into running a business as a fellow entrepreneur. I'm sure you know this. Um, and they didn't capture any of that. It's an art to it. It's yeah. an art. And we didn't get to see that art. Um, so I'm showing my art in other ways. I like that. I like it. So let me ask you this. Do you what what is the relationship with you and Robin after the show? Is there a relationship um, in there? Define relationship. Okay, cool. So with that being said, like <laughs> You know what, K. Simone? I don't know if this is a shortcoming of mine or if this is actually um, a good thing of mine. But once I've decided that I'm done, I'm done. And it doesn't mean that I'm upset. It just means I'm done. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I'm saying that I didn't own some part of wrong in the situation, it just means I'm done. It doesn't mean that um, I won't be cordial with you. It just means I'm done. So yeah. we're done here. So, so with that being said, though, because you know the last conversation we had, and I'm sorry, because you know we got to catch up. So that's why I'm like, you know, talking about this. And we're going to move on in just a second. But the last conversation that we had, you know, you and Robin were great friends. And then we were looking at how everything was unraveling on camera. So do you think that, you know, for reality TV, do you think that cameras brought out a different side of individuals that was normally not there? Or do you think it was always there and then it was amplified because now the light is the, the spotlight is on you? I think when it comes to reality television, there's several factors that that come into play. Right. Um, I grew up dancing um, and I'm a lawyer, of course. So my ability to perform has always been there. So I don't necessarily have the same nerves that I think others may have who aren't used to performing. Um, but that being said, your character is your character. Okay. You know, um, despite how anything played out on the show, I think what is obvious is that I had good intentions. I didn't try to maliciously hurt or talk about anyone. Yeah. Um, but you know, some, some malicious things came out on that reunion. And that was enough for me to just be like, okay. And, you know, I didn't even watch the reunion, so I can't even speak to what actually aired. But what I can say is in the few hours that we filmed, it was enough for me to be like, we're done here. We're done. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So now that we're done with that, okay, we're, we're on to new things and better things for you. You are now Escal like you have now elevated into a whole judge crystal like let first of all how does that feel to be the only cast member from the show to land another tv show i mean i don't know how honest i want to be right now i'm kind of in a good mood so i think i'll be kind of honest <laughs> i mean it does feel a little good i'm human right um and that's probably a little bit of my ego, which we all have, admittedly. Right. Um, but the reason why it feels so good is because I got so much backlash. And I got I got um so much hate from most of my cast mm -hmm. that, you know, it didn't it didn't bother me in hindsight really I think I was more confused yeah. um but it is a little validating to have someone come along and say hey we would like for you based on your personality and what we saw of you to be on this next opportunity because I think you handle yourself very well and I think you are a voice of reason 
So we would like for you to display more of that on our new show. So it is a little validating because it's something that I already knew about myself. And now it just gets um, to be portrayed on, on another network in another way. So Absolutely. yeah, it is fun. It, it's a lot of fun and a little validating if I'm being honest. Well, that's awesome. So let's talk about Barry the Hatchet, where Krista Kimbrough is the judge. Get, break it down for us. What what can we expect for this show? Um, talk to me. What what are these cases going to be like, honey? Because I saw a little snippet, <laughs> and oh, um, I didn't even see a snippet. Do you have a snippet? Oh, okay. I saw I saw some snippets, and it it's going to be a laugh. It's going to be a laugh. Okay. Let me paint the picture. Barry the Hatchet is a judge show obviously on daytime tv with yours truly serving as the judge and the twist on our show is that i also have members of the jury mm -hmm. i have three members of the jury and those three members of the jury are comedians girl they were on Def Comedy Jam. They do regular tours. So they're all very, very accomplished comedians. And not only that, they're hilarious in real life. Yes. So you have me, the judge, that's presiding over cases. Some cases are involving two people. Some cases are involving throuples. It's a situation. And they are real life scenarios. And so I just kind of had to take a back seat and like soak it in a little bit um, because I'm like, you put up with what? You <laughs> did what? Do you know you could, that's assault? That's, you know. So anyways, um, I'm presiding over the uh, multiple cases. There's 20 episodes. I saw about 20 different cases, I think. And there's a myriad of issues. There's friendship um, quarrels. There's ex-husband quarrels. I mean, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. And they're very, very long film days. Um, but I feel at peace knowing that I think we got some results within them. Okay. Okay. Well, I know the episode that's airing tonight is going to be a young lady who had who's married and her husband and has seven kids outside of their marriage because she got her tube side without his without his knowing oh child and i don't know between and listen the jury is what's gonna have me because kelly kell's face the entire time had me rolling i was <laughs> shout out to kelly angel henry those are the members of the jury um i just love how they chime in and they give their little input mm -hmm. um and their little comedic relief during the midst of something heavy. And then you have Henry who's holding it down for the men, or he thinks he's holding it down for the men. And you'll, you'll see Henry's personality come out because that man could have had seven babies on his wife. And Henry is going to find a reason to defend that man. <laughs> when I scary, but frustrating thing at the same time, because yeah. that's a scenario that happens in real life. Like, no, sir. No. We're not doing that. <laughs> We're not doing that, okay? We're not. But you know what? I think that's the, the plot twist. We see so many um judge shows and some of our favorite judge shows, like uh, Judge Do uh, Judge Mathis and the People's Court, you know, has all been canceled. And now here comes Barry the Hatchet. That's bringing a whole new twist, a whole new spin to that, you know? So what what is it that you want people to take away from Barry the Hatchet? I really want people to know that we're not here to replace the old favorite judge shows. Um, I also want people to embrace the fact that judges look like other ways, you know, that maybe aren't traditional and maybe we're not the age that you thought we were. Maybe we're not the race you thought we were. Um, we're human too. Uh, and we're, we're litigating real matters. These are people's real lives. So I want people to just remember that as they're soaking in all of these facts from the case, like these are real people. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So you actually went through the cases yourself and picked out the cases or was it like a team effort? How, how do we go about picking the cases? So it's still TV, right? So um, you're still going to have production that actually interviews the potential litigants and um, filters them out, <laughs> runs background checks to make sure we're okay. Okay. Um, so I 
pick out the cases, but I dig, right? Because when people give you their side of the story, they're giving you what they want you to know. Mm -hmm. And it's my job to dig into what we need to know, not what you want us to know. That's true. And you know what? You're very good at that. I'll give that to you. You are very good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies who list, like you, you are very good at that. You're, you're triggering. You're triggered. You're triggered. Remember you're triggered. <laughs> and you know what? I was triggered. Well, I wasn't triggered on the first show, but I was definitely triggered on this show. Like, woo! I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> was not triggered. was not but this show yes it's worth being triggered over <laughs> I believe it I believe it now listen we know you have a, a love life that's happening right now congratulations to you and your boo oh okay right, so stop acting like we follow <laughs> stop acting like we don't follow each other we follow each other I know I know what's going on Sometimes you think you can just sweep by and no one really notices and you're just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. but you notice. Like, I notice. I notice. Melissa, <laughs> I was having this conversation with my agent. And of course, like, I got to ask you this question, you know, being successful, black women, black entrepreneurs, owning our own, owning our business. Do you feel like, you know, do you feel like it's, it's a, a issue when it comes to women having it all? Like, do you really feel like you can have it all? You know what? First of all, yes, you can have whatever it is you want to have. Mm -hmm. And I don't say that um, lightly. I say that with conviction. You can literally have everything that I have right now. It's because I've been nurturing it my whole life, whether or not I've subconsciously or consciously did it. It's something that I knew that I wanted. Therefore, I have it. Um is it difficult being a businesswoman, a successful businesswoman? It depends. <laughs> because, for instance, is it difficult being a housewife? Someone may ask, right? And my take on that is, I don't think it would be difficult being a housewife to the right man. If you're a, a housewife to a whole man, a man who doesn't have a huge ego, a man who appreciates and acknowledges the part that you play in running the house, running his life, then you have a mutual appreciation for people. And now you don't have one party thinking they're carrying the brunt of the responsibilities. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. So my on whether or not it's difficult being a successful businesswoman is it depends. It depends on who your partner is, whether there's a huge ego, whether they can play a supportive role when they need to. But then also me knowing that I play supportive roles in his life as well. Um, and it's OK for for a period of time to be all about me um, without him feeling emasculated. And it's also OK for a period of time being. Got it. I like that. I like that. See, and you was just going to sweep that under the rug. People, need, women need to hear this. Okay. Women, no, seriously, women need to hear this. Women need to see this because there are some women and there are some ladies right now who feels like, you know, it's impossible to have both. It's impossible to be able to submit and then, you know, be about my career and be about who I am. It is people who really feel like that. You know what I mean? So, well, your reality will definitely be your outcome. So yes. if, if that's what you keep accepting, that something's difficult, something's impossible, then it will be a difficult, that it will be difficult and impossible. Absolutely. And timing. Timing's a thing too. For sure. For sure. See, even you blessed, you got happy when we started talking about him. See, look at you. See? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, Crystal, I definitely always appreciate you for, you know, yes. showing me love. And of course, I'm always going to show you love. All right. So where I appreciate it. Of course, of course. So you got to tell us, where can we see the first episode of Barry the Hatchet? So you can catch it on Peachtree TV, which is a network here in Georgia. And then you can stream it on Atlanta News First. Um, it's a gray media production. So you can essentially stream it everywhere okay roku fire stick tubi anywhere and check us out every tuesday come have a laugh come have some serious moments absolutely well thank you so much crystal i truly appreciate you my love what's up
up, guys? Crystal Kimbrough here with Barry the Hatchet and Kimbrough Law, and I'm on the phone with Kay Simone.